Question number two from the June 2019 ITA paper for the combined science. This question is on the waves topic. Figure three shows the equipment a teacher used to determine the speed of a water wave. The equipment includes a ripple tank filled with water, a wooden bar that creates ripples on the surface of the water, a light source which causes a shadow on the ripples of the on the screen. So as you can see, <clears throat> We have the ripple tank set up and the screen with the shadow of the waves that is being created. Question 2.1 Describe how equipment in figure 3 can be used to measure the wavelength, frequency, and speed of a water wave. So they've got, they've asked you for three different parts wavelength, frequency, and the speed. So think because it's a six mark question. It's easy to actually think okay i'm going to get two marks for describing how to measure the wavelength two marks for the frequency and two marks for the speed so let's have a look at each of them one at a time so overall we've just used the equation for speed so we know that the speed of a wave can be calculated using the frequent equation v equals f lambda where v is for speed of wave f is frequency and lambda is the wavelength or you can simply write the equation down <clears throat> by stating that you are definitely going to get one mark because that relates to the speed of a water wave the speed of the water wave can only be calculated you're not actually taking measurements direct measurements here so in order to find the wave speed you will need the frequency and the wavelength so how are you going to measure the frequency Remember, frequency is the number of waves per second. So there's different ways of actually looking at it. And I'll list both of those. Measuring the frequency, use a stop clock. First point is to use a stop clock to count the number of waves passing a point in a fixed period of time. Say, for example, 10 seconds. Divide and then divide the time by the number of waves to determine the time period t for one wave and then use the equation f equals 1 over t or you could simply read the frequency of the oscillator for the wavelength so that word wavelength shouldn't actually be okay let me get rid of that that's for the next section oops there I go. So that is for measuring the frequency. How do you work out the wavelength? Now for the wavelength, remember, if you lay a ruler here on top of the screen and then take an image, you should be able to count the distance between a given number of wave fronts. So for example, let's say you can use the ruler to measure how, how many waves, what's the length of these waves so i can see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven waves so what is the length of eleven waves and then simply divide that length by eleven to give me the length of just one wave which is going to be the wavelength so answer <clears throat> Measuring the wavelength, place a ruler on the screen, on the screen top of the waves, wave shadow, and use a camera to take an image. Use a ruler to measure the distance between two wave fronts on the image, and then count the number of waves between the wave fronts. Divide the distance by the number of waves to determine the wavelength of one wave. And for Determining the velocity, determine a mean value of frequency and wavelength. So you could repeat the above two or measure the time it takes for one wave front to travel the length of the screen and measure the length of the screen. So if I go back to the diagram, in order to measure the wave speed, I can measure the total length of the screen and then time how long it takes for this wavefront to travel that uh, 
total distance and that should give me the wave speed as well that's a different way of measuring the wave speed the teacher puts a plastic duck in the ripple tank as shown in figure four the plastic duck moved up and down as the waves in the water pass 2.2 how does the movement of the plastic duck in figure four demonstrate that water waves are transverse waves remember there are two types of waves transverse and longitudinal waves here the duck's movement is up and down and the wave direction is going forward so how do we know that it's transverse the duck moves perpendicular to the direction of wave travel simply saying the duck moves up and down is insufficient here direction of the wave wave direction or we could say the energy direction and make a note on the other type of wave Longitudinal waves, where the oscillation is parallel to the wave direction. Next question, question 2.3. The teacher measured the maximum height and the minimum height of the plastic duck above the screen as the wave passed. The teacher repeated his measurements. Table 2 shows the teacher's measurements. Calculate the mean amplitude of the water wave. How do you calculate the mean amplitude? Now, if you remember the diagram or the shape of the wave if i draw a really simple diagram of a wave so that will be the maximum height that's the minimum height now they're asking for the mean amplitude remember the amplitude is from the midpoint so that's the amplitude what they are measuring, what he's measuring is actually from there to there. So 509 to 503 millimeters. So calculate the mean amplitude of the water wave. So you need to calculate the mean for mean height and then the minimum height mean. So if you add mean maximum height is 509 509 plus 513 plus 511 divide that by 3 should give me 511 millimeters and the mean minimum height is 503 plus 498 plus 499 that gives me 500 millimeters so the difference is 511 minus 500 that gives me 11 millimeters that's the mean 
between these the maximum height and the maximum minimum height and you need to divide that by two because it's only half of that amplitude is only half of that and that gives me 5.5 millimeters 5.5 millimeters that's the end of question number two i'll see you in question number three